So All what's right. up, everybody? Big Herc 916 getting down on YouTube. You know how we do it over here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Go to BigHerc916.com. I'm here with my man, Jeff Brown. You've seen him get down with me on Fresh Out from NTS. And uh, I'm glad to have him over here on this platform. We're going to be chopping it up here on a regular, trying to bring some some game, lace up some of you youngsters, you know, share conversation. And um, I had to get him over here before the holidays because there's a lot going on right now. And um, man, he has a lot to say. I have a lot to say. So um, I'm going to let him kick it off though. Jeff, man, I, I woke up today and, uh, you know, I I'm I'm not one for a lot of gossiping, but you know, I always say what, what's done in the dark could come to light. If you're one of those people who are really out there and you're judging other people and um, you're doing things and you're thinking you can just like get over on people, you know, not treating people right. And we've seen what they done to uh, um, R. Kelly. We've seen what they did to Bill Cosby. And uh, it, it appears that Puffy pissed somebody off, bro. He pissed somebody off. Well, first off, I think that Cassidy, um, you know, she was in a relationship with him for 11 years. She, you know, whatever she went through in that relationship, because I've seen these women go through situations like this. And when they get to their next man, he's dealing with all that luggage and maybe whatever bedroom conversations they had. He's like, look, um, this needs to come out. And now we hear about all this stuff. But on top of it, everything else that's been like kind of swept under the rug, man. What do you have to say about, you know, what you've been hearing is in the new developments with um, oh, T.D. Jakes, man. Uh, Well, um, I, I, I'm going to be a, a little lofty. How's, how's my audio? Good? Yeah, yeah. Audio is good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be a little lofty, brother. Uh, first off, before I get into that, uh, thank you for having me back over here. Uh, I'm glad to uh, to do this kind of thing, bro. We need to do this more because uh, the the voice of the goddamn grown-ass man is uh, they're trying to, to, to strangle it. They're trying to, to, to smother it. And those of us who ain't scared need to stand up and speak. So... And I know that's you and you know that's me. So anytime. Um I don't I don't even want to be arrogant enough to say it's what I said. Brother, this is the age of Aquarius, as in the time where all will be known. All will be known. If you got some skeletons in your closet, you better pull them out on your own. Because if you are proselytizing a particular dogma or you are uh, big up in a certain category or, or way of life and there's something in your closet that disagrees with it, oh, bro, it's finna come out. This is the time for that. These are the people for that. These young people, if you're over the age of 45, this ain't even your world. You're living in their world. And in their world, which is what I'm really hoping uh, where we get to in politics, bruh, one, they want the cliff notes, and two, they sniffing for any hypocrisy or lies. And once they find that, they done with you. And they're supposed to be. And it is that time. It is uh, what Puffy came up doing was doing business like the models of the people who did business like that when he learned it. That's over. That's over with. The whole 360 deal in music over with this new group of this new group of people, man. This is why I can't throw out all the young people. I can't because it's them that's generating this energy. It's a bunch of them that's savages, but that's young people, old people, all of those who do not fall in line with the thinking that you and I share, bro, this next thing finna wipe their ass out. It's finna wipe them out. This is, it's 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 the time. It's it's time's up. Time's up. The bill is due. The bill is due on on, on all foolishness, financial, medical, physical, sexual, social, any foolishness 
that you know you know you're involved in, you better knock that shit off. Well, you know, even um, going to that, I, I watch, I look at a channel on Instagram called Baller Busters, and they're busting all these guys out, these fake crypto um, scam artists, what? fake real estate. Yeah, man, they 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 got these guys. They're they're busting them left and right. You know these these got they you know they had the time with the timepiece gentleman. He just got busted where he was taking guys' money, deposits on these high-end watches and, you know, not paying people back and, you know, gambling and going to Vegas, riding around Lamborghinis. You know, all this stuff you're doing now. And I tell people, I've yeah, been on- All so that 80s crime? Well, the stuff you thought you can pretend and tell these lies, now people will check your jailhouse records. People will check, what year were you on what yard? You were in the dorm. You were not no shot call. You were not doing, oh, you said you were, you you got this Lambo and this Rolex, and then they find out, oh, that how that mansion is not listed under your name. You're lying, you're you're scamming. Wow. So all this stuff now, like you said, you have the tools to um manipulate are there, but also to get information. So the same way they're putting out propaganda, you can you can start researching and be like, hey man, I, I ran that guy's license plate and that address, that wasn't his house. He was lying about that. He's this and that. So mm. there's a lot of things coming out and people who have really treated people, like you said, in the past by these, uh, these old tactics, you know, where you used to go to these uh, parties and you go up in a room and there's a bunch of dudes in there and you go coming out the bathroom and the dudes are standing in front of the door blocking and they're just taking advantage of women. You know, I've heard of these type of cats and dude, they've been getting away with a lot of shit, but all that shit's coming out now. Yeah. A lot of it's coming out. Yeah. Well, I say the same thing. It's 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 this. I can't even call it blue collar crime, or or I'll start there. Um, blue collar crime is over. You done? They're, they're we done with that? That whole uh, running a a liquor store with a shotgun, uh, thinking. Uh, the credit card scamming in the mail, thinking all that the uh, uh, multi-level marketing and pyramid scheme, thinking all of that's done, all of that, and so is blue-collar malfeasance. If you on any of this low frequency, uh, I'm gonna scam like it's 1968 mess. You finna get busted. It's too easy. So the genies out of the bottle. Everybody has the tools now. So so in your opinion, like, you know, the old way where these guys were, um, you know, kind of like exploiting actors, actresses, you know, telling guys, hey, man, um, you know, uh, you want this role, come over here in my house at this time, and you get there, and it's not a party, it's just you and this person, and they're trying to get you to do something. And, you know, people back in the day felt like they were in desperation, and they had no, they felt they had no, um, no voice, but now that voice has come. And a lot of these people, everybody thought were such these iconic people who they clap for and give awards to. They're finding out those aren't the people they thought they were, man. Well, uh, the whole landscape has changed. The whole, it's like uh, um, a saying that's coming to me as I say it. As the sun moves, so does the shade. Uh, that used to be, it used to be, I, and I say this is what what uh, what kind of negatively fueled me too. Is the you take the 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 female actresses of the world that the Harvey Weinstein's of the world took advantage of. What drove them crazy for years is every time they got an Oscar or an Emmy, a Golden Globe, or a high recognition, they have to ask themselves, am I getting this because I earned it or am I getting this because of what I did in that room that day? And it's a hell of a thing to have to live with. Well, that room doesn't exist anymore because... Uh, Panavision used to be, you know, they were their own. You still can't buy a Panavision camera. You have to rent them. 
but the 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 cameras cost so much money and the lighting cost so much money and the editing cost so much money and the distribution cost so much money to where I knew I wasn't going to never get that money but I knew I had a, a, I'm a star I know I'm a star I know I got what it takes so if all I got to do is blank well I'm going to do blank and I'm going to live with that, but I'm going to live in a, a 12,000 square foot house with people cheering my name. I can't go to the grocery store no more. But pretty soon you can't live with yourself because of what you did. I call that, uh, that I, I, call, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I call that, um, I call that uh, actor's regret or actress regret. Remorse, yep. Remorse, you know, where you hear these actresses now saying that, they don't feel like they got paid enough money. It's not that they they feel like for the money they got paid and what they had to do to get it, now they're looking like, why'd I do that? Why'd I do it? Because I heard a couple of actresses talking, and you know, you say the women with Weinstein. Let me tell you the only reason we haven't heard more about the men, which is gonna come out with TD Jakes and all this other stuff, is because men they want you to do homosexual stuff, and no man wants to have to own up to woman okay this nasty dude he had a a a, 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 a you know a mutilated wee wee you know what i mean but the with the dudes to get the role which you you know you've heard it i've heard it in the you know and um you know richard Pryor talked about in, in the comedy thing you want to go on back in the day the johnny carson show you know you show up you know the dude says hey you know let me let me let me do this and that and you can get a position there and i've seen where you know men wait a minute R richard Pryor said that you don't remember when the guy who used to write for Richard Pryor talked about, and there was another comedian talked about the producer used to, when you went and wanted to get on back and down a Johnny Carson show, bro, it's been all over the no. internet and you used to have to show up and the guy would sit there and he'd want to do this and that. And, and I forget, I can't remember the comedian's name in particular, but he said, Paul he Mooney? who Paul Mooney, Paul, Paul Mooney mentioned it, but it was another comedian. He said he turned it down. But then a couple of weeks later, a month later, he seen Richard Pryor on the Carson show. And he went to Richard. He's like, man, bro, didn't you, did you have to go see the so-and-so, so-and-so? And he's like, yeah. He's like, dude, did he try to do that? He said, he said, did you go for that? Man, you think I didn't? And so what I'm saying oh, is. Oh, man, you got to, you got to give me a link to that. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll find it because I, I've heard wow. it. Times, but they're, you know, it's, it's, you know, a gatekeeper, bro. And the thing is with a lot of these things, I'll tell you straight up, look. I worked in a porn industry. You know that. Everybody knows that. They can't ever bust me out for it. And I've done, uh, went on sets over there and I've been on regular sets and I've been on auditions for regular stuff. And a couple of times I went to uh, uh, auditions or, or um, actually interviews on the straight side for regular acting among some people who were in some pretty prominent buildings. And dude, I've been propositioned and I didn't get the part because I'm like, dude, I, I, I just ain't porn. And it's just me and another dude up in there. So I know the proposition for men. So I, and I used to wonder like, damn, why am I not getting these roles, man? Why can't I, you know, I see this dude working. I'm trying to do this. I'm in great shape. In my 20s, I was killing it. But I wasn't playing the game. And, and not fast forward, I didn't realize that on that side, there's a different game. It's not you know, oh, bus, you know, you and this woman, it's no, it's a, it's a power move for a lot of the males, you know, it, it, it to show that I've had him, you know, that guy, they want to, it's a, it's like a thing where these guys, they don't want, I've heard a guy say, I don't want a guy who's already gay. I want the straight guy. I want him. Okay, man, you're going to, okay, man, you're going to make me throw up. Yes. No, that's for real talk, bro. That's in the, that's the that's the thing where it doesn't, you know, if the guy's already know, no, I want to see what I can do to him. It's a power. It's a conquest. It's, it's a, a conquest yes, to turn yes, you out. Yes, yes, yes. I've been to audition where a guy told me the guy who sent me on the audition told me when they go up in there and they ask you to take your shirt off, get completely naked. I said, dude, naked. I said, he said, man, look, get complete. You'll get you'll get the, you'll get the part. I want to say it was a. I can't remember the hill figure or one of them, Calvin Clyde, one of them underwear things, but they wanted me to, you know, and I went up in there and it said, take my shirt off. There was, I can't remember a couple dudes, maybe three dudes. I know at least two in a hotel off of sunset. And I've told this story before. 
And I took my shirt off and there was a pause. And I looked around and I didn't proceed. And they said, oh, you can put your shirt back on. Thank you. Right. That was it. Now, there was another guy when I was leaving. I seen him, he pulled up in a drop Corvette back in the day. You know, he he he's working all the time. He's getting a lot of gigs. And uh, and I'm, I'm just saying, I'm telling you guys the real how it is. I'm not trying to, you know, if you want to be gay, man, look, I, I got gay roles. Do your thing. Do your thing. I'm not judging. I'm just telling you what the game is because a lot of people go in here blind. Ooh, they're blind like this. And they thinking they're going to go in there and just get it because you're hot. I've been in these auditions. Everybody's in shape. Everybody's like, everybody has a body, abs. Everybody, everybody is. It's the NFL. It's the same thing. It's I've been. A, it's the I, NFL. Everybody can run. Everybody man, can pass. Everybody can throw. Man, I'm telling yeah. you, everybody is at the same level. But what I didn't realize that there's certain things you got to do. And this guy apparently he's down with it, and he worked. He was working a lot at the time. So in retrospect, I say that. And you know, for these young people who go to these auditions, I'm gonna need that name later. Um, for which? Oh, for that? Uh, that comedian? The dude you're talking about? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it because he talked about it and he said like this was going on back in like the '80s. And it's not like him. Not him. I want to know you. You tell me later who that is with the audition that was working. Oh, you know what? You're I can't tell me now. I can't. No, I'm gonna tell you. Like as far as I can't remember the the, the name, but. The audition I went the first time, it was in a building in it was on I want to say it was in Beverly Hills. I can't remember if it was on Rodeo or yeah. the street next yeah. to it. It was in a high rise, maybe by one of those uh by one of those agencies. And I tell you, the lady who was at the front desk gave me a look, like, uh oh, like she looked at me and she's like, I said I'm here for so and so, and I can't remember it, bro. It was like this was like uh probably this was like probably ninety nine like two thousand. Like 99. Okay. There was nobody else in the office. It was her and this dude. And I, I can't remember. I want to say the dude was like, he was in a a, a, a nice, I don't know if it was Armani, whatever suit, high-end suit. And he was in his office. She was sitting there and she pointed me where to go. And she kind of looked at me. I looked at her. Kind of weird vibe. Went in there. It was dark. Went in the office. Door was shut. And uh, he asked me to get undressed. I took my shirt. I took my shirt off. He's like, "Oh man, you got a great body. Wait, what is what's your body? You know, you, you know, for modeling." So I took. I, I got. I'm a, I got down. I was in my. I was in my um, boxers and my socks. And then he was still in there, kind of like perplexed, like waiting for the next move, and I didn't move. Uh, right. But I'm thinking I'm in Beverly Hills. I made this is like a legit, gonna be a legit situation. And bro, I never got a call back. And when I left, she kind of gave me the look. And I'm like, you know, I, I I didn't at the time I was 20, probably 20, 23. So I didn't really understand what was that about. But okay. if I probably would have had my wee wee out, bro, I would have been, you know, who knows where I'd have been at. But right. I didn't go for the wee wee move. Bro, I can't tell you from a casting perspective that that has happened to me. Because, for one, I I was never acting broke. Meaning, my career to and I'm a, I'm gonna dovetail back into this. My career as a comedian went a little different. I won Star Search in '94. As soon as I won it, I didn't go do clubs. I was on the road everybody and not just black everybody that wanted somebody clean and funny doing comedy in front of them and it's a long list that I'm not going to run right now but when I got into the auditioning phase I was like wait a second y'all going to have me audition for something I might get or I can go on the road with so-and-so for six weeks or three weeks or even three months. I spent three months living in Caesar's Palace, open up for Ray Charles. At $3,500 a night, I'll see you when I get back. I'll see you when I get back. So when I got back, I didn't walk in the office on no desperation. I didn't go, look, 
I don't need y'all to keep my lights on. I want to do this, but I want to do this. I don't need to do this. So there is a, a certain echelon of manhood that I'm going to say right here on this show, y'all watching. Me and my man doing some big things. You about to see just how far two hardworking, talented, conscientious, upwardly mobile, straight black dudes can go. I guarantee you, you ain't finna hear none of them stories about either one of us. And if it come down to that, then I guess you just ain't finna see our project because you ain't finna <laughs> see our draws. I can tell you that. Yeah, it, it's, tell you that. it's definitely, like I said, I mean, I, I, you know, I've always had a foot back then. I had a foot in the street and a foot in the game. So I was kind of like, you know, kind of like teetering both sides between doing adult movies, you know, trying to do regular acting and doing street shit. But when I would go to these things and then I would see, but like I said, man, if you don't have a mentor in Hollywood, like somebody really putting you up before the wolves get you, because I've seen it where in adult entertainment industry, bro, uh, I, I, I bring a girl to an audition, right? I knew a lot of girls and I was cool because they're like, you know, I wasn't a pervy dude. I was never like, uh, uh, you know, some of these dudes, right. Dude, they're straight. If it was, I mean, on the porn set, dude, these dudes are nasty. They're just pervs, man. They don't even, even in that business, you've got to have a sense of professionalism. Right. But I would but take the predators. Girl. Yeah, they're predators. I would go in there and I would be like, okay, waiting outside. And I'm like, damn, this girl taking a long time. I remember one time I'm like, damn, we got somewhere else to go. I go to open the door. Dude got her. Bent over, he plowing the shit out of her. On his desk, I'm like, damn. I shut the door. She comes out later. I'm like, I didn't tell you to do all that. What the, what, what's going, you know what I mean? And but because it's adult entertainment, they think this is what they got to do. So this shit goes on, bro. That's why I said. It doesn't surprise. Wow. Yeah, dude. It, it, I've seen multiple times, seen shit like that. I've seen where these dudes... You know, I'm not naming no name, but these dudes like take advantage of these girls. You want to be in this video? It, it, and the thing is, it wasn't even. It was just like, hey, uh, bend over, pull your pants. I'm seeing it, man. These girls don't say nothing because they figure, oh, you know, I have to do this to get the role. But wow. yeah, this wasn't no. What do you What do you think it was? This was me pulling up, introducing somebody to get help them get work. So I'm saying this shit goes on, bro. These girls do get exploited. But like I said, on a higher level for the dudes who are prostituting themselves, it goes on the same way. But guys don't want to say nothing because they don't want nobody to know that they had to do something that was homosexual. The women, it's bad for them because they feel like, oh, this guy, I had sex with him. He took advantage. But the guy, he got taken advantage it's a different of. Different level. It, it's a different level of, and especially when you're trying to be a dude, you're all muscled out. You got a six pack. There's a lot of dudes. I've seen some dudes, good looking dudes in shape. And dude told me, man, that guy right there, bro, I seen him at the party, blah, 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 blah. You know, yeah, so and so had a party. There is a, a very prominent uh, ex Olympic athlete, track and field, used to have these parties. My boy told me about it. Yeah. And there would be, yeah, yeah. You already know what I'm talking about. And there would be everybody, dudes from there, from the late, all type of- Heard about them parties. Yeah, bro. And he was, he was, he used to point the guy, he said, that guy was at the party. I said, that dude? He said, man, I seen him there. I seen him there. I could train this guy. We were cool. He would tell me. So it doesn't surprise I'm me. I'm going to tell you uh, what I heard about those very parties you're discussing. Is that it was full of male sports oriented freaks on that shit meaning sports casters uh, NBA. Uh, 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 trainers NBA th them dudes over there was doing some some of that and I have a story from a working girl that I knew up in Sacramento that I will never repeat live because I cannot prove it but I will be more than happy to tell you this story that she didn't have no reason to lie to us. We were, we were, uh, um, I was working a comedy club up there and she was a good friend of one of the waitresses. And me and the waitress was kind of getting down behind the owner's back. Cause he had this thing about if you do something with his waitresses, you couldn't come back. Cause they was all his. He's a real dick. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 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 
and didn't tell one joke. I'm like, eh, man, come on. Uh, this girl told us this story. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the story, but I'm not going to give you the names. Three incredibly prominent black figures. Incredibly prominent. You would almost guess most of them. Uh, she got a call. She said, the call said, can you get two of your friends? Because it's three dudes. We want you to do your thing, but we want you to dress up as cheerleaders. Yeah, all right, because it's what we do. We do this anyway. They get there dressed up as cheerleaders. And their job is to cheer on the three of these dudes getting each other off. She said it was a total shock. She had no idea that that's what it was going to be. They had to sign confidentiality agreements. They had done that before. Uh, they 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 had been through all the you know the 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 disease testing. They had done that before. You know, so they think it is what it is. They get there. Oh no, this is a color of a different horse here. So it's no shock to me what you're saying. It's it's um. I personally have made it over my career crystal damn clear. I don't get down like that. I don't I don't I don't play like that. I don't roll like that. I ain't mad at you. That's your shit. So just are you, like if we are ahead. you surprised by the what you've been hearing, all the stuff now? Like what do you do you think like is it this person has ran his course in reference to uh Puffy? I think what has happened, bro, is, and you know you and I, uh, we we cross swords about this, but it is my belief that when white supremacy is done with, it to with its toys, it breaks them. What is the real need for Puffy now? Puffy is like Michael Jordan. Puffy is Penny Hardaway. Puffy is that kind. How bad does the NBA need Michael Jordan to score 40 tomorrow night? They don't. How bad does the industry need Puffy to find somebody right now? They don't. They done with this dude. That is coinciding with the time when all will be revealed. I say this even about myself. If you got some skeletons you can't explain, now is a good time to shut the fuck up. So you're 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 saying that Cassidy, um, all the people he he screwed over at Bad Boy, everything now coming to like at some point where just eventually shit catches up to. You're saying that's because of white supremacy or just because he he done took his course, he done burned so many people, and now it's just the shit's catching up with him. And when you are kind of like throwing it in people's face and you're not doing the right thing, it just comes back to bite you in the ass. I look at it like him, T D Jakes. Who you know everybody looked up to worship. Yeah, what's going on with TD Jakes? Go into that. Dude, TD Jakes. They were saying that he was at these parties with Puffy and that, you know, he was, you know, having him have guys uh, you know, handle it, hook him up so he can get, you know, his cheeks blowed out. And, you know, basically, um he 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 was uh involved in these 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 uh situations with prominent politicians, entertainers. You know, it was the next level stuff at this party. And everybody there is supposed to be on the same time. And you go there and, you know, he can engage in his thing. But, you know, on camera, he's this prominent pastor. But behind closed doors, bro, he, he's tooted up in the air. And um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a show going on. So they're saying wow. that he was involved in it and it's about to become the light. All that he's done along with, you know, the Puffy parties, which everybody's talked about him for years. You know, and uh, I tell you right now, I, I've seen parties where you get invited to. I've been invited to some kind of weird parties. I didn't go. And therefore, you know, certain parties where there's a stipulation like, hey, Jeff, uh, this is the party. But, you know, the after party to the party is going to be a part of this. And, you know, if you're down, you know, there's a lot of people there who would be happy if you come, blah, blah, blah. But just be open. Literally. You might be seeing some stuff that you wouldn't suspect. I've, I've, I've had those invites. I didn't go. I've had those invites. So it does, like I said, that's why I said 
it's not white supremacy, bro. These part you get a disclaimer before you go, because I, I I I can show you I I don't have it no more. But these messages I can get from dudes who were prominent brothers, big you know some of these dudes went to major universities and they used to be like when I was you know big Herc I remember you from the movies, bro. Blah 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 and this and that and you would never know these dudes is married families you know could be you know right. upstanding members of the community. Bro, you would never know. But it's like I said, I, you know, I chose not to participate in those activities. Bruh, I can say two parties, and again, not going to throw no names out. One, me and my wife at the time were at an after party. Uh, I'll throw this these, these names because they were with us. Uh... Remember the you remember the movie Baps with Halle Berry, mm -hmm. and the girl that that she was uh, co star was co star with her Natalie. Mm -hmm. God bless the dead. It was Natalie, Vivica Fox, about three four other people, me and my wife, and it was two other dudes, and it was a bunch of women. We were at this party, and all of a sudden. We heard somebody say it's about that time. <laughs> and it was like we were all ready. It was like it was like the people here, here, oh her, it gets so much better. It was like the people who were down with this were already standing in an area. <laughs> so when security came over to us, it was like Okay, yeah, I guess everybody here ain't down with that shit. And they ushered us out of the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was a gang of dudes over on the other side. I was like, oh, does this mean what I think? Oh, you nasty bastards. Oh, bruh. I, and, and you know, I don't, for me, I don't believe in judging another man's free. Okay? <laughs> if that's your uh, male, female, Long as ain't no kids or animals involved, I don't yeah, give a shit. Yeah, with yeah. You. yeah. That, me too. I, like I said, I'm not. I, that's why I don't judge. But for other people right. to be judging, it's gonna come back to bite you in the ass. It's that lying shit. This was my yeah. problem with the LGBTQ community: Jesse Smollett and Bishop Eddie Long. The reason I don't take the LGBTQ community serious is because they don't police their own. And you can't take anybody serious that doesn't. This is why often the police aren't taken serious, because the police don't police their own. This is why women aren't taken serious, because women don't police their own. Yeah. The LGBTQ community allowed Bishop Eddie Long to, he had crusades, bro. He had crusades at his church. Pray the gay away. Where he would have people come and try to be delivered from being gay. He would preach on it out of Leviticus, out of Romans. And then turn around and not only be dealing with males, but young boys. And nobody from that side said anything? Y'all ain't got nothing to say. You're not going to condemn this man for condemning you. Then, Jesse Smollett lies. Lies and blames this, his attack, on him being gay. When really what I think is he got into some rough sex that he couldn't explain to his boyfriend. I really believe that's the crux of this. Wasn't that the situation where he said there were Trump guys that jumped him and it was the Africans? Yeah, the dudes jumped him and left a noose around his neck and all this. Bruh. The LGBTQ community should have made that motherfucker walk the plank, and they didn't. They didn't. Now, if you need to cut that out, I can go this. The LGBTQ community should have made that dude walk the plank, and they didn't. Well, no, the, the accountability factor, you're exactly right. I mean, it, it's no different than in, in the porn industry, Ron Jeremy, you know, now he's, you know, yeah. he said he went crazy, but all the rape. I've heard from a girl, I'm not going to mention her name, but she said she was at a party, had did a photo shoot with a prominent adult, uh, adult photographer, uh, 
came out the shower and I've seen where these guys come, go in the sh- go in the bathroom and are getting ready. I always wait outside. I never you can ask anybody in the industry. I was never on that bullshit. They would go in the room. Right. She trying to get dressed. They pulled her thing out. Go up on the girl and force themselves on her, which is considered not consensual. You know, and she told me that he did that to her. She told me that. And I'm like, damn. She's like, yeah, you know, it was at the party, though, blah, blah, blah. I just, you know, afterwards, I just, you know, got dressed. And, dude, I'm telling you, man, that's why, I like, for me, I, I was always like, the type, I'm the type of dude, if you hit your girl, if you was on some weird shit in the hood, I'll put hands on you. ain't, I'm not kicking with you. bro. I'm not with that. Like, I'm not wow. with all that weird shit. You know, you, you know, you don't, you're, 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 you know, trying to get girls drunk and sleep with them. Dude, if a girl ain't sober, I'm cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not with that. But I've seen dudes do that. They pass out and they go in the room. She's passed out and they're there. I'm like, dude, I'm out of there. You're not going to get me caught up in none of that bullshit. Well, well, and not even, here's where I am with it from a karmic standpoint. I'm like Marvin Gaye. I want you the right way. But I want you to want me too. Just like I want you. I don't, I have never, bruh, never. And I've had the opportunity a few times. And when I started to see the pattern that led to the opportunity, I would avoid it then. There's two types of women that I do not waste my time on. Drunk women and dick teasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you talking all this sexual shit, I'm good. I've embarrassed women in front of people. Look, you can play with me, but don't play with my dick. Because it sounds like we're going to be fucking after this the way you're talking. And I said in front of everybody. Because I can't stand that. I can't abide it. It's not necessary. And I stayed away. There's nothing. But then again, I mean, you know, popping collars on the both of us. I, I I believe I speak for you, and I definitely speak for myself. I ain't never had no woman short. No. So I never, it never even crossed my mind to come from that place. I don't, I want you to dig my vibe. I want to know I max you down. I want to know that, that you dig my conversation, you dig where I'm coming from, and that you want to have sex with me. If it take a whole bunch of alcohol to the point that you sloppy to get there, then one of us is not supposed to be having sex with the other. Yeah. You if if you got to get sloppy drunk to have sex with somebody, then maybe you shouldn't be having sex with them. Yeah, that that um even when I used to go to the clubs and I would see like the women, I I bounced out the clubs and I've been to the clubs, but when I used to see women stumbling around and like, you know, and then you turn around and she maybe puked in and then dudes are like, oh, cause you're right. And they're still trying to get her. I'm like, dude, you're going to take, she's already puked and just stumbling dude. Do you know, she don't, she don't know what's going on. You're still going to try to dude. you. You're going to catch a case. That's my whole thing. You can I, easily catch a case. I'm not, I'm not catching no cases like that. But like you said, some guys are on that. And those are the guys I have to question. Like, dude, what type of man are you? You know, I don't get out like that, bro. And I said, my whole thing was always being professional. I, I, you know, even when the girl, like she, I don't care if she has sex on the set with 10 dudes in one of those games, I would never like try to make it seem like because you did that, now you should just openly. I got a license to just yeah. treat you like a toilet. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Not in my book, man. So, um, no. yeah, man. Um, no. you know, a lot of people, man, they they don't know this game. is It's a vicious game. Entertainment game, man. It's vicious, man. Sure, sure, and I'm. It um. Uh, it's about time. It's about time. Um. Uh, I'm hoping this energy catches fire in politics. Meaning, I'm not talking about what you do on your off time. I'm talking about when you're asked a direct question and you don't give a direct answer. Your your political sh- career should be over at the end of the sentence. Well, you know what, too, Jeff. I look at this timing. They keep, you know, this is like also a distraction from the Jeffrey Epstein list once again. They keep talking about that list is releasing, and coincidentally, right before the list, we're going to get all this about TD Jake's puffy and all the tensions going this way. Where this list he got 
All these people who've been running around on TV, we've been seeing them. Some of them are running in politics. Some of these people run these corporations and they don't want nobody to know. They've been on that, what do they call the, uh, that whatever that airline is. And uh, they were engaging in some stuff over there. They know they shouldn't have been. So there's a lot of stuff that's about to, like you said, come to light. A lot of people are going to blow yeah. up. 2024, man, people's heads going to explode. People's heads going to explode. Between 24 and 26, bro, I, I I tell people, I tell people, and this is to dovetail over into another conversation, uh, I don't believe where you and I are sitting is going to be called America in the next 18 months. I think it's going to happen that fast. What do you think it's going to be think, called? I don't know, but, but somebody that is cooking up a flag for it. Right now, somebody is cooking up the the uh um uh, because this America shit is about done. Well, it's about it done. Like um, do you remember um uh something similar like this happened happened in the Eastern Bloc, and then you had you had all the countries break off. You know, you had uh, Lithuania, you had uh, uh Bulgaria, you had what used to be called like you know Ukraine. All these and and, and certain people got tired of certain communist policy. Then everybody broke up. And wanted their own independence. And as you can see in other states where they're getting tired of it because yeah. there's nothing yeah. we, we're, we're being we're being accountable for somebody else's non-policing of their people. Therefore, it's spilling over here. And at the end of the day, man, look, if, if you run a business, if you got a family, you want your kid to be able to come home safe. You want your business to be able to open and you can serve the community without being robbed. You don't care. I mean, I don't care if a doctor is black, white, Asian, if he can do a good job and help me get well. You know, at the end of the day, man, everybody wants to be able to have the benefits of a of a community that serves itself. And the way things are and, you know, how people, uh, some people are just turning a blind eye and, and, and lack of accountability it's going to be a lot of accountability coming up, man. People who, like you said, have been getting away with things. And see, this is the thing, like when you're doing this, you know, what these people have been doing, you know, whether it be Hollywood, whether it be sports, whether it be uh, politicians, um, you know, you're like, man, I, I'm, you know, I've been getting away with it. But these people in these powerful positions, when they pull the curtain back, what you see is going to be... <laughs> a, a lot of things that people are going to be like, oh my God, I didn't realize this. So um, I see it coming, man, you know, and this is just only the tip of the iceberg, bro. It's only the tip of the iceberg. I mean, you know, the P. Diddy, T.D. Jake thing, the Epstein flight log, you know, that they keep trying to, you know, suppress. They don't want nobody to see it. You know, all these actors who went over there who, you know, they're they're like now scared because, you know, you know, if you chose to get on that plane and went to that island with them underage people, you know what you were doing, bro. You know what you were doing. You know what yes, I mean? No more. Uh, um, that island, I'm going to guess, was only a surprise to maybe 5 to 15% of the people there. And most of that is made up of the victims. The rest of you knew good and hell well what you was on that plane for. It, it's almost like the people, Jeff, who go to Thailand. Way over there, know yes. what this area has in store, whether it's the lady boys or the underage, you know, and you go all the way over there to think you can get away with something and then come all the way back over here. And you know, when you go into a certain district, they tell you, hey, man, this shit is not what it is, but you still go over here. Bro, you you got you, you got what you got coming. <laughs> you know better. You know, it's almost like when they bust those people on those shows and, she, and I seen a lady, she was texting. She's like, yeah, you were going to meet this 13 year old boy. No, no. I was just going to tell him that, you know, you shouldn't do stuff like that. No, you were over here thinking you're going to hook up with an uh, underage. Yes. You know, when they bust those people out and they, they're like, you're, aren't you waiting for so-and-so? And they find out it's an adult that's been texting them on right. like Snapchat or something, TikTok. Right. Right. Yeah. The, the, that to catch a predator's type joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bro, I'm telling you, once I'm elected emperor, we gonna have some nice, torturous stuff to do to these people as soon as we can hook up a, a paper, a paper <laughs> deal. Dude, 
I think, I think that if you are tried and convicted of taking sex from a woman, that there ought to be a Thanos like glove that a dude puts on and grabs you. They, uh, uh, he hold you by your chest, your shirt and your chest hair like this. Take that glove and just grab the front of you. Just dick and balls and just pull it right off of you in front of everybody. In front of everybody. Just good two, three thousand square foot a uh, thousand psi pressure to just pull, just grab me. and we see what's on the other side of your genitals, just your guts or whatever else comes out. Hey, I think that's how you should die, dude. They, they just, I just saw a story, I can't remember the guy's name, but he had been missing from like I want to say like 10 years ago, right? He had mm -hmm. had raped an underage minor and then got out on bond and then disappeared and never made it back to court. A fisherman just found his body in the bottom of some lake. He was uh, he had a, a a chain tied around him, and he was anchored by a hydraulic jack in the bottom of the of the lake. Damn! So, See, like you said, somebody justice. he got out on bail, and somebody and like somebody took care of him the right way. That was the last they heard of him. He's been down there for the last decade. So, I mean, you know, Good. shit, man. It's like you said. Uh, it ain't no joke, man. And um, it, it's, it is definitely eye awakening. And between now, we, you know, 2024 is going to bring even more uh, exposure to a lot of things. And um, Absolutely. We'll definitely be jumping on here more often talking about stuff, man, because we didn't even get to uh, Jonathan Majors, bro. It's already an hour and we didn't even get to him. And um, that's wow. a whole situation. Well, let's do another one later, man. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely jump on. I got a couple of errands I got to run, man, but I appreciate you taking the time out, brother. And um, we will be Appreciate you, man. Hey, what's your social Absolutely. media? People want to holler at you. Hey, man. Um, at GB Funny Style is Instagram and Twitter. And uh, this Sunday at noon LA time, I invite you to tune in to, on YouTube, the first Church of Holy Shit where I am the pastor. Somebody fucked up and told me God was everywhere, so I pray from right here. Saves me 10%. I never miss a game. And I invite you to save 10% on your soul insurance by switching to Don't Go and come here and talk about God without a name because in order for God to have a name, you have to believe a man. You don't have to believe a man to believe in God. And that's what my joint is about. I'd love to have you. Yeah, speaking of joints, come prepared to smoke because we get high and talk about God. There you guys have it. Big Herc 916. Jeff Brown. All right. Peace uh -huh. out. That was a good one, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was... Officially, I only got one real spanking my entire life. My mom did the best a 14-year-old could do, raising me with love and instilling values that will last a lifetime. I was a straight-A student and lived to make her happy. So how did I go astray? A horrible stepdad that stole my self-worth and invoked fear turned me into a person that I struggled to overcome. From skateboarding to selling drugs, gang-banging the juvenile hall, I got caught the same way many young promising men get caught up. I struggled to find my identity, getting mixed up in shootouts, crime, and the adult entertainment industry. This roller coaster continued as I juggled college, hustling, and Hollywood, eventually catching a federal bank robbery case. I found redemption in prison while serving a 120 month federal sentence and came out a man on a mission. I became a social media influencer with over half a billion views on YouTube and a life coach mentoring people all over the world. This is my journey against all odds.
Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com. Merry Christmas from Big Kirk 916. Don't get on Santa's naughty list. Go to BigKirk916.com and wash your ass. Pick you up a bar of soap so you can make somebody's holiday wishes come true.